second round that we join it for the first of those and describing the action again of course reg guthridge so there it is then tremendous atmosphere in rimini and everything that stecker does will be loudly cheered by the crowd but i don't think the puerto ricans too worried he's fought in the hard school of detroit and chicago and he won both fights by knockout so in the blue tri trim then victor Calais and the crowd chanting lorry lorry for stecker stecker's younger brother maurizio won the olympic gold bantam in los angeles to sort of break the stranglehold of nine usa goals so in this uh, return fight then Kali has won in the eighth round in puerto rico but now that uh, steck has got the champion in his hometown almost well he probably figures he can get it back what a sharp opening round it is as well sometimes the crowd heavily on your side although it's nice for a fighter to have as a disadvantage that he just might open up a bit too early in the fight He's it's a long distance one it's scheduled for fifth round 15 rounds well they're not going to laugh about at the start are they they know each other's style they know each other's punch power eight stone ten this weight the british boxing board haven't introduced it yet it's between bantamweight and featherweight i really don't think we've got enough fighters to go around in Britain anyway, well, the left hook there, and then he got home from Calais. I think there's going to be some contusions right at the start here. The way the punches are going in, really quality stuff. Oh, just tottering there, he got caught with a shot and stumbled. And the champion knows how to finish, he's a very composed character. Real quality fighter. They've stopped the lorry chance at this stage. I think they recognise that Stecker's got it all to do. Oh, and an exchange there. What a start. Well, it's not always the big fellas that can excite, you know. These, these little guys can fight a bit. And pound for pound, they're punching hard. Good, busy little fighter, step or two, all punching away there inside, making Calais let go. He doesn't want him claiming him at close quarters. As I said, every punch from the Italian is really going to be signaled from the back of the arena. Oh, yes. And that's a bit of an Italian Jack the Lad signal, isn't it? You didn't hurt me. I'm still in there. And the old firm of Umbank. Umberto Branchini on the outside of the road. He was one of the old managers in Italy. Knows his way around. Let's have a look at the replay of that then. Good exchange of punches. Look at that. Clobbering around the face. A couple of misses, but a few got through. So into round two. Can they keep this speed up? I doubt it. Both got good stats, they keep their gloves well up, and they'll need to. A good exchange again now, this really is an exciting championship. And I must say they look bigger than the 8 stone 10 division. But that's the way to get away from punches there, he really is a craftsman isn't he? Calais. Their elbows well tucked in there. That's why they're not trying to go too much for the body. They might damage their hands throwing punches. And the crowd now really cheering the Italian on. Occasionally you can just hear a few words in Spanish coming from Calais's corner. Good round for Stecker.
Well, he looks pleased with himself there. He acknowledges the crowd, but uh, I'm sorry, it's a little early to do that in the championship fight. Into round three. And as I said, scheduled for 15, the World Boxing Association, who of course appointed the officials. So they can be as neutral as they can, but uh, this type of fight, I wouldn't have thought the mathematics are going to be necessary. Stecker actually fought one British opponent from Wales, Steve Sims. He, that was for the vacant European featherweight championship back in 83. He won that in seven rounds in Sardinia. And he actually held the Italian featherweight championship over... Uh, he could move up if he lost this one. Oh, he's looking determined now. Gritting his teeth there, Stecker. Getting a bit rough. The referee telling the Puerto Rican not to pull Stecker on. And the crowd going crazy. They often wonder just how much the visiting fighter can hear of all that or whether he's got too much on his mind to bother and certainly it's a good round for the Italian even the cameraman caught up with excitement in the crowd there Stecker's got to make sure he doesn't punch himself out in the excitement being absolutely urged on by the crowd turning to southpaw now players trying any sort of tactic to confuse Stecker and he gets away with that too. Good punch. And there's blood dripping now on uh, Kalaz's shorts. And it looks as though Stecker might have a bit of mouth trouble as well. And a bit of swelling around uh, below the right eye. Just watch the way he moves off the ropes there immediately. He stood in the corner of the champion, sort of luring the man on. Good, I'm back to your corner. That's going over the top a little bit there with Stecker. We don't need that, thank you. So let's have another look then. Really is determined at this point, Stecker now. Grits his teeth, looking for the opening, but always got to watch for the counter punch coming in. Look at him there, a real little tiger of a fighter. And a, and a good volley there. And the crowd going absolutely crazy as Chris Dudulu has to get in and part with using his heavyweight size. Into round six. Six. And Steck has been really full of running here. Been bruised up a bit. But you never write this Puerto Rican off. It, he really impresses me, the way he works. Remembering fighting away from home is so difficult, really. And not only away from home, but more or less in the lion's den. There's, there's times in this fight when it must have been like the Roman Colosseum, the cheers that they've been giving as the gladiator went in. So for sheer pressure, and Stecker's been ahead. But it's all about picking the punch at the right time and the staying power. And the Puerto Rican's corner. They're really calling the Arriba advance. We want their man to go forward a bit. Been boxing on the defensive and countering a bit too much for them. one out of the blue he's been so calm and waiting for that counter punch he's got over it fairly well stecker now the crowd's still behind the italian obviously but they know their man's in trouble here so Calais 
just not holding back but he's making sure that he doesn't walk into a silly punch if he can do it once he figures he can do it again surely because he's in the wars isn't he showing the signs of battle stecker there He, he throws a combination if the right hand misses he's back with the left hook immediately and again doubles it up to the body oh a perfect punch there and he came off the floor as he hit the deck but it's right near the end of the round now and he's getting the standing eight count or the mandatory eight count there as Christodoulou wipes the gloves is he going to stop this? It's close to it, surely. And the bell has come to Stecker's rescue, or has it, because he's really in trouble. And the fault over the ropes there from the second, that he goes back to the Rankini father and son corner, and he'll need all the help he can get. He really is in trouble. I think he's got trouble with the jaw. He's kept his mouth open. And it looks close to the end, surely, for Stecker. And in replay, there it is. That's almost a perfect punch, and the feet went right underneath him there, and again. And yes, it's all over. Stecker has retired on the stool with, I think, the fractured jaw. And there it is, the, the obvious uh, jubilant seconds there with Victor Calais from Puerto Rico. And the sad sight, really, of Loris Stecker for a very good fight indeed. But uh, there he is with his uh, relations, of course, as always, a really quality fighter, Victor Kalaios. A oh, really tremendous scrap, that one, and uh, Stecker suffering the second defeat at the hands of Victor Kalejas, and it was confirmed after a trip to the hospital that that jaw was actually broken, so it really was a very plucky showing by the Italian.